Hi, I'm Carla. I'm the rector here at Ascension. Our mission is to love with the heart of Christ, to act with the body of Christ, and to think with the mind of Christ. And we need your help to fulfill that mission. This video that you're about to see introduces you to our staff members, in case you don't know them, and also takes you out into the world so that you can see how we are being the body of Christ in the world in conjunction with other Christians in this community. I hope you enjoy it. Our praying shapes our believing, so we gather weekly to share Holy Communion with one another, where we break open the Word of God, the Bread of Christ, and our own lives. Your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Lifelong friendships, sacred music, holy worship, a place where my soul can grow, a place to be fed. People come to Ascension for many reasons. I come every week because the people here are, you know, nice, caring, loving, and stuff. And the only time I'm happy is actually when I come here. Our youth teacher is really nice, and he does all this fun stuff with us. Yeah. And he's just creative. The food. The food's <laughs> good. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the fellowship. The fellowship? Really enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. I feel that closer to the Holy Spirit. It's a great family atmosphere. There's a lot of kids around. It's just a great place to be. Well, the music and the liturgy and the people, of course, friends that have met and I've been yes. friends since 1961. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love the worship service. I've always enjoyed participating in the choir in the yes. past. And I love the people. The okay. people are just amazing here. The community that feeds my soul every week and your sermons priest sermons also uplift and bring joy and peace to a life that can be chaotic. A community that allows um, my soul to grow. I just don't That's think not. I could make it through the week without coming to church. I, along with the rest of the staff, love serving with you here at Ascension and helping you to fulfill the mission we all have of being Christ's light and love for each other and the world. We work hard to be faithful stewards of the gifts you share with us. Diane Vesmar, our bookkeeper, helps us to be good stewards of your money. I do all the financial reporting for the church. I keep track of the records. Uh, I keep the financial committee apprised of our the financial status here at the church. I'm here in the office Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 to 2, and my door is open. Anybody can come in and ask me any questions they need to know about the records. From Monday through Thursday, I sit at this beautiful desk at this wonderful computer from 11 o'clock until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I put together the bulletins every week. I take care of all the email correspondence between parishioners and the staff. I update the website. I'm kind of the face of the office. For better or for worse, it depends. Corey is also our music minister and only works 16 hours as the office manager. So to do his job, he needs the support of volunteers. Volunteers make my life bearable around here, just putting, especially when it comes to the Ascensionite. Uh, putting, putting things together, fielding phone calls, stuffing envelopes, anything and anything like that, volunteers are just invaluable. Corey's primary work with us is as our music minister. My responsibilities as a music minister encompass anything and everything that has to do with music at Ascension, okay. whether it's adults or children or instrumentalists or congregational song, all of those things and everything that encompasses that. Anything that has to do with praising the Lord through music <laughs> comes under my arms, I suppose. My grandfather used to tell me, if you, and everyone else, that if you, if you find a career doing something you absolutely love, you will never have to work a day in your life. <laughs> and I don't think I have to work. I can't, I could never imagine being paid to do something I absolutely love doing. My greatest joy comes from playing while people sing and hearing the people sing. And if the singing's strong enough that I can stop playing and the singing can continue, then I consider my job 
done to the highest there. One of the best expressions, I think, is, as of us as a community of Christ is in our singing. Second, maybe to the, second, of course, to the Eucharist as, as a communal thing. But when you think about it, people don't get together and sing for really any reason anymore other than in church. We gather on Sundays to share in a sacred meal of bread and wine. And we gather on Wednesdays to share a more ordinary, if equally nourishing meal of food and fellowship. Our parish chef, Boyd Barker, helps make that possible. I cook and plan the meals um, for every Wednesday night supper. I like to see someone's face after they've eaten and they've had a good meal. Boyd is also responsible for keeping the buildings clean. The parish sexton is responsible for the caretaking of the building. Mm -hmm. I clean, take out trash, I mop, I sweep, um, I chase after toddlers, teenagers, and clean up after them. I like that it provides me a job. And uh, I live for my job. It's been a great experience uh, over the last nearly seven years for my daughter and myself to have this as uh, our home church. Along with music, fellowship, and worship, one of the primary things people value about Ascension is our ministry with children and youth. Roger Spear, our director of children and youth ministry, is key to that ministry. Basically, we have programming from zero to 30-something. Programming offered basically throughout the entire week for smaller groups of kids mm -hmm. to come together. You know, the room is designed to be interactive, so Sunday school is about telling a story and then having some kind of activity. Instead of just being talked to or coloring a sheet, they're actually playing games and solving puzzles and things that have to do with the principle of the story we're trying to teach. Youth group is actually focused on worship, and we come together for 45 minutes for a contemporary worship service. We hear a message, we sing some songs, we do some prayer, and we have a conversation. Uh, this year we're focusing on the hero's journey, so I'm wrapping the stages of the hero's journey through Jesus' life. We have a separate group, there are two separate smaller groups that meet on a semi-regular basis. One is for the older high school students. We meet once a month in someone's house. We have dinner and we talk about issues. We have a Boy Scout troop and a Girl Scout troop here at Ascension. Uh, I support both of those, one more directly than the other. I'm the Scoutmaster of Troop 726. Every summer our kids go to Camp Henry, which is a major part of their, their lives, their formation. Roger helps students understand their parents better and parents understand their children better. And our deacon, the Reverend Pat Jones, helps us understand the world better and the world, the church better. I'm a deacon at the Church of the Ascension. I work with the, um, the outreach committee at Ascension and we are really working hard. I've, I've, we've worked hard in the last year, year and a half to bring together all three Episcopal churches mm -hmm. in our area uh, to be a committee uh, and work together on outreach ministries and we've adopted Safe Harbor and have worked hard with Safe Harbor to try to do things like remodel an apartment and um, and now we're working with them at their resource warehouse and gallery. To be the hands and feet of, of Christ and to serve the dis disenfranchised and those that are hurting in Catawba Valley and do it in a collaborative and cooperative way between our three churches. I love that spirit. I love the spirit there and um, their, their challenge to themselves to grow and become what God's calling them to become. God is calling us to grow and to mature in our faith. One way we do that is by joining with others to help God transform our world. As individuals and as a church, we work with Safe Harbor, with Exodus, the Soup Kitchen, the Diocese of Durgapur and Western North Carolina, missionaries in India and Bosnia, and our local schools to help transform the world. We highlight some of that transformational work here. Our first stop is Safe Harbor Rescue Ministry. Our collaborative effort was St. Albans and Epiphany. Executive Director Debbie Haynes. I think probably the best way to sum up what Safe Harbor is, it's a safe place for women to come mm -hmm. to really work on rebuilding their lives. How have you seen lives transformed uh, through Safe Harbor? Well, I, you know, there are so, so many levels of transformation that mm -hmm. I see. Newly homeless women finding a dry, safe place to tell their story. Women finally ready to deal with the core issues that led them to addiction and homelessness, finding a safe place in the residential center. In 2011, members from St. Albans, Epiphany, and Ascension joined together to help rebuild and refurbish an apartment in the new residential center. And they also secured a grant from the diocese to help Safe Harbor launch its new business. 
This is called Resource Warehouse and Gallery. It is a creative reuse center, one of only 47 in the United States. Um, we take things that people would throw out and repurpose them. Local artists use the materials donated to Safe Harbor to create unique new items for the Resource Center to sell. The artists receive a commission and the funds help maintain the ministry of Safe Harbor. The Resource Center also provides important job training for the women in the program. This $15,000 is what made Resource possible. It was the seed money. Hard choices. For over 40 years, we have been integral partners with Cooperative Christian Ministry. Members of the parish have served on the board, volunteered in the health clinic, the pharmacy, the thrift store, and the food pantry. We have donated food and clothing, our professional services, and financial support, both as a community and as individuals, to support this essential ministry in Hickory. The work of CCM is needed in our community now as much as it was when it began 42 years ago, and our support is still needed as well. CCM was started some 42 years ago uh, to meet community needs. We've grown into really three things, crisis intervention services, health care services, and ancillary services. It is the medical ministry of Catawba County. Had about 7,500 patient visits last year, which if you add up our health care system, we're yeah. saving Catawba County about $15 million in health care services that somebody would have to cover if we weren't here. The backbone of our, particularly our financial and our food operation, yeah. is our churches. Okay. We depend on that. It's, it's unbelievable. We, we have literally saved lives. We are seeing more and more unemployed people who, you know, not too long ago had a nice house, nice car, and health insurance. Yeah. Today, they're struggling to survive. In 2010 and 11, we worked in partnership with Reggie Longcrier and Susan Smith from Exodus Ministries to continue the ongoing work of repairing the breach in our society caused by slavery, segregation, and racism. We have done that through book groups, friendship groups, and social justice groups and also by strengthening our support of Exodus Ministries. Exodus uh, Ministries is a faith-based supportive housing program for recovering alcoholics, addicts, ex-offenders who are returning to our communities from jails, prisons, detoxes, and, and uh, treatment centers. We also have a very active prison ministry. We go out to uh, prisons in Western North Carolina, particularly Catawba Correctional Center. Mm -hmm. We bring uh, men from the prison out to church every Sunday and we do a lot with them to help them learn uh, what their options are before they come out of prison. Well, one thing that we need uh, certainly is unrestricted financial uh, contributions because that helps us pay the, the bills that we have to run a 63-bed housing program. We have utility bills, mortgages, insurance, gasoline, vehicle repair, vehicle maintenance. Uh, the residents come to us with absolutely nothing and we have to help them with food, clothing, medical care. Uh, they have uh, lost everything and they need everything. And also we need people to hire our folks, they need to work, mm -hmm. they pay for the services they're receiving. So we would appreciate if people in the community would think of us when there are job openings that could be filled by some of our residents. And also hire us. We have our own businesses where we've created jobs for our residents through Exodus Works. We have residential and commercial moving, residential and commercial landscaping, cleaning, painting, general labor of all kinds, a thrift store. So if people would hire us to provide the services they're going to hire someone else to do anyway, we're fully insured, we're very convenient, we're affordable, and we do a great job. And so if people hire our folks to do those services, then they help them get their lives back and help them pay for the services they're receiving. Thanks to churches like uh, Church of the Ascension, who ha you have been great friends to us, great partners with us. You've helped us through your indigent fund over the years when people need a prescription medication or special tools and clothing for their jobs. You know, Church of the Ascension has been a partner of Exodus Home since the very, very beginning, and we really appreciate you. And because of you, that's one of the reasons we're still here today. I have a bird I like to hold. Realizing that often the best intervention is prevention, we have for many years reached out to our public schools to help them educate the children in our county. For the past 14 years, we have had an especially close relationship with Longview Elementary School. We have tutored in their reading program, been pen pals, taken students on picnics, provided backpacks filled with school supplies and food, and we have been the primary supporters of Bridge to Tomorrow, a two-week summer program for children preparing to enter kindergarten. If you're wearing yellow, stand up. 
We spent a morning with the principal of Longview, John Black, and several of the teachers in the program to highlight the benefits of this transformative program in the life of kindergartners and their parents. Some of the children come in and speak different languages. They may have never heard another language okay. until they come here. Just building those relationships and, yeah. you know, the, the title, Bridge to Tomorrow, it does, it bridges that gap between being at home and coming to school. And A lot of our kids come in two years behind everybody else. Wow. Even, even though at age five, you're behind. Even though they're only five. Yeah. And so it really gives them um, a small setting to come into. It doesn't feel as overwhelming because there's not as many kids. They've never been in a setting where they get to sit and listen to a story read. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the kids, when they come in, they're the, we're the first people they've ever heard read a book to them, show them the pictures, wow. and ask them questions and let them talk about maybe how, it has, how this has happened in their life also. There are several aspects of parental involvement that we've built into this program. One is uh, that we do require the parents to come twice during the two-week program. They come at the beginning mm -hmm. and they come at the end. We end it with a pizza party and we show a slide presentation of all the things that the students have done during the week. So it's really modeling for the parents. It yeah. also gets the parents used to coming mm -hmm. to the school. And then also we send home supplies to with the students at the end of the week, oftentimes in a book bag, and mm -hmm. with directions okay. on how to use these flashcards, how to use these crayons and pencils. And so it's really to help parents see this is how I can help my child at home, as well as having them feel comfortable coming to school. Come Holy Spirit, come and transform us. Fill us with Christ's love and light so that we can with our lives, with our gifts, with our time, our talent, and our treasure. Think with the mind of Christ, love with the heart of Christ, and act as the body of Christ. Deepen our prayer. Guide us as we nurture our children and inspire us to continue to proclaim good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners. Amen.